What is going on? You are listening to the Questions Hip Hop Trivia Podcast. I'm your host, Sean Kantrowitz. Welcome back. We got another great episode here for you. This one is straight out the vaults. It is episode number 21 featuring MC, producer, DJ, triple threat, one of my favorites currently doing it, J Live. This episode is from May 1st, 2020. It's an old episode. We're still figuring some things out. We were working with a point system back then, which I quickly abandoned. We don't do points. Now it's just the amount of questions that you get right. There's a couple other markers of this episode that kind of date it in some ways. There's some COVID talk about masks and things that I left in there. This was like all still new at the time. And it's kind of a trip to go back and listen to that and think about how long ago that seems and then also how we're still kind of dealing with a lot of this shit. I don't know. Anyway, I think you guys are really going to enjoy this episode. If you're interested, there's also a companion playlist that I put together with all the songs and music that is referenced and addressed and mentioned in this episode. You can find that playlist on the questions Patreon at patreon.com slash the questions hip hop. I'm going to put a link in the bio to it. You'll also get a bonus moment from this episode where J Live turned the tables on me and I'm too embarrassed to actually keep it in the edit of this episode. But if you join the Patreon, which is a safe space, you can see what I'm talking about. The Patreon also provides a lot of other stuff. You can get bonus footage from other episodes, exclusive playlists, discussions, early access to content, and much more. If you want to support the show, I advise that you join the Patreon. All right, we're going to get into it. This is a classic episode of The Questions featuring J Live. Let's get into it. Who did it first? Who did it best? Who did it worst? That's the question. Who rapping there? That remix and what happened when? That's the question. Hmm. And if you ain't know what needs, then my guys know what you need. Some answers to the questions. Uh, how's everything going? What, what, what's, what's going on in this quarantine time for you? Not much, man. Just, you know, quarantining down here in Georgia. Yeah. You know, the uh, governor wants to state even though he you know doesn't really know what's going on <laughs> good looking out georgia we really appreciate that uh but y you are staying safe you're inside everybody everybody's good on, on your end yeah, every little step i take gonna be in this house <laughs> yeah you gotta find creative ways to get your steps in uh yeah. you know we're all I mean, I, oh I, I keep my space i get my you know get my mask on and whatnot yeah I'm, I'm amassing a collection of masks right now. I started off like I'm just going to need one. And then, you know, I've been seeing others. I wear glasses, as I see you do. Have you perfected the uh, the don't fog up your whole face uh, situation? Like, what, What's your style or technique on that? For me, um, I usually just rock a bandana. I got a, I got about a box of masks left, but I don't know if I'm going to find them. So I don't really, you know, wear those. I just rock the bandana, but... You tuck it up under the glasses and then put the glasses back on over it. That's that kind of lets the air go out to the side. So, but am, but am. I mean, you know, <laughs> you heard it here first. You thought you were going to get some hip hop trivia, guys. We're getting bandana glasses techniques from J Live yeah. himself. So, a tutorial. I'll probably do a little live tutorial later, man. <laughs> hey, guys. Thanks for watching. Make sure you just subscribe. I'll show you guys how to uh, get your bandana right. <laughs> right. <laughs> Um, well, that's good. I'm glad that you, uh, you're, 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 you're finding ways to stay safe. Uh, again, we're really uh, pleased and happy to have you on the show tonight. Um, and, uh, yeah, if you're ready, you want to get started with this? Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. I don't know if I'm ready, but you know, no time like the present. You're as ready as you're ever going to be. And for everybody watching, if you guys want to, um, uh, have any questions for J Live, if we have some time at the end of the show, you drop it in that little question box over there. The little uh, question thing at the bottom right, and uh, we will get to those if we have time. So we're going to move into our first round of the night. And the first round is called The Choice is the Yours. Choice. These are general multiple choice, worth five points each. 
Mm -hmm. uh, and we're going to get right into it. The first question is, what was the A-side of Big Daddy Kane's first single? Was it Raw, Just Rhyming With Biz, Get Into It, or Ain't No Half-Stepping? Mm. The A-side... Uh... I'm gonna go with Raw. He's going with Raw. But the answer was actually get into it with the A side okay. of his first single. <laughs> now, <laughs> say it again? I do not have that, so there you go. <laughs> That's a little fair. But uh, Big Daddy Kane, uh, I just heard you on a podcast. You did the Dad Bod Rap Pod podcast recently. Shout out to Dad Bod Rap Pod. Um, sure, that was a yeah, and you you instantly, you know, a lot of times people get asked their favorite MCs and people kind of like, you know, they, they waver, they sort of like fluctuate a little bit. You went right into it. You knew, you, you, you had the answer right. <laughs> Kane is, as for so many artists, but Kane was a huge influence. Yeah, I see I've disappointed some people in the comments, but, you know, get used to it. It's going to be a long night <laughs> if you're crying now for the first question. Hey, listen. You're going to need a bunch. <laughs> When you're in the hot seat, folks, it's a little different. You might, you might know the answer, but when you feel that pressure is on, you know, so we're, we're not we're not doubting J Lab's credibility here. We just can't I start. Had to, I had a feeling it'd be the one that I wasn't really that familiar with, but I just went with my gut and went with Raw. But yeah, Kane was always my favorite because um, it was always that whole Kane versus Rakim thing, you know, that people still try to talk about to this day. Yeah. And I've always been Team Kane. I love Rakim, but I've always been Team Kane. Absolutely. All right. Well, we're going to get into our second question. It's all right. We got off to a little false start, but we're going to back into it. Main source used this sport as a metaphor for police brutality on their seminal album, Breaking Adams. Was it A, baseball, B, basketball, C, football, or D, foosball? In retrospect, it should have been D, foosball, because that would have been dope. <laughs> but it happens to be uh, A, a friendly game of baseball. He says it's A, friendly game of baseball. Absolutely correct. Yep, Babe Ruth would have made a good cop, but he didn't. Instead, he was a bigot. Dig it. Uh, J-Live, you know, we don't know what the situation in studios and album-wise for you is going to be. You might be able to do a remake. Would you do a, a friendly game of foosball, like, update? I could be a one-man Lost Professor cover band. <laughs> that would be dope. But I... I think you, biggest. You know, I never, I never really thought of it, but like you sort of are the successor to the large professor uh, lane, I would say, right? I mean, I, you can't say that, but I can say that about you. That would be blasphemy I, for you to I, say. I don't have a producer chops like that to be any kind of successor. He was definitely a, a heavy influence. Breaking Adams, you know, front to back was probably one of my favorites growing up. Um, but uh, no, nah, nah, I wouldn't go that far at all. <laughs> what, okay, that, that's a fair, safe answer. Uh, when did you actually get into production? How like how early was that? Um, all right, so officially 2000. I've been rhyming since I was 12, DJing since around that time. But I didn't want to consider myself any kind of producer until I had my own gear. So in the 90s, I learned how to use the, the S950. I, I learned how to use the, the ASR10. But uh, until I got my MPC 2000, I never really you know got considered myself a producer like that. So when I got to 2000 and 2000, that's when things were 2000. Yeah, so you can hit the pads. You, you were waiting for yeah. the pads. The pads was, yeah. Yes, yes. Thank you, awesome. Roger Lynn. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Roger Lynn. Um, all right, uh, if you're just joining us, we got Jay live in the house. We're uh, halfway through our first round. Make sure you guys drop some questions in there. Um, uh, we are going to move on to the next question and we're going a little bit old school again on this. Right. This artist was the first woman signed to Def Jam. Was it Ooh. Queen Latifah, Heather B, Nikki D, or Hurricane G? All right, so Latifah was on Tommy Boy. Hurricane G was probably on Def Jam because she was down with Red Man. My Heather B records, I think, say Electra. And I love Nikki D. Um, well, hang on, kid, and your man is my man. Was it Def Jam records? So I'm going to go with C. You see how he went through the process here. You know, he was he he broke down. He was he was he was he was going through his thought process, process of elimination, and it served him well because it was Nikki D. 
Um, it was dope too, man. Had the little gold tooth and all, man. Shoot. <laughs> Super dope. Also, there was definitely, uh, you, you, as you guys can see, just looking at this question, there was definitely some rule that was enforced that you always had to have a letter at the end of your name in those days. Hey. It was real. <laughs> it was real. <laughs> Heather B., Nikki D., Hurricane G. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it's, it was the... First uh, 12 inches per purchase, actually. Which was? Uh, Latifah, Wrath of My Madness. It was one of your first 12 inches. Yep, one of the first to have that thick princess on the pot, princess of the posse on the B side. Mm. Dope. What a what a great way to begin, and then because you were DJing as early as rapping, so the DJing was taking place early on for you as well, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. I was like writing my first rhymes and learning my first scratches. Yep. Amazing. All right, we're moving on to the final question in our first round. DJ Spinner released the 1995 party break, Everybody Bounce, under this alias. I'll play the uh, party break. Hmm. Was it Crooklyn Clan, Cold Cut, The Cheese Hawks, or Rude Rhythms? 95, wow. See, that's, that's almost unfair, because that's around the time that I met Spinner. Mm. I met him upon doing the... Um, Dragon Rights remix, and that, that came out in 95. But I was not familiar. I actually met Spinner through George of Rorschach. Um, Is it like the thing when you yeah. meet somebody and they tell you their name, and you're like, you just met them, so you're not really like paying attention to their name? He might have met you and been like, hey, I just put out this uh, break record under an alias, and you were like, to to right. Alias, how am I supposed to know that? I mean, <laughs> gotta read the liner notes. I'm gonna go with uh, I'm gonna go with D. I saw somebody in the comments mention D. I see a okay. couple people. We 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 allow the comments. We can't always guarantee that they're gonna be right or wrong, but they are a resource that you can I'll use. Totally get using uh, the Joe Blogs uh, SAT prep method. <laughs> <laughs> All right, he says D. Shaboy! Hey, yes, Rude Rhythms <laughs> is the answer. So as you mentioned, you uh, you worked with Spinner. <laughs> Several times uh, in, in your career. I think he would name himself Rude Riddles. You know, shout out to um, Jig Masters, Criminal, and them. Yeah. Um, yeah, it sounds like that. Sound like that's, that would have been my logical choice too. So it made sense. Um, so wait, how can you tell us a little bit more about what like the working relationship has been like with Spinner? Because you worked with him early on, you said, but you've worked with him a few it, times. I, I actually credit Spinner for uh, being like I call him my my, my producer Sifu. Because um, working on, you know, the first joints that we did together, I was watching him like a hawk in the basement. You know, the guy's got, like, wall-to-wall -wall records, and, you know, he was on, the, I want to say the 3,000. Um, but just, just, you know, learning how to filter bass lines and, and chop samples, and he had, like, all the gadgets and whatnot, man. So I was like a kid in the candy store, just soaking it all in, you know what I'm saying? Young, young Padawan, just watching the master. Amazing. <laughs> yeah. No, nah, he's 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 one of the best. He's he's great. Um, all right. Yeah, what up? <laughs> yeah, what up, everybody in the chat room? Uh, yeah, definitely drop some questions in that little question box if we have time at the end of this. We will go into a little Q and A. It's about time for our second round. Our second round is called Picasso, baby. So, what it is that we do? We are going to give you an album cover, a little piece of it, and you have to identify what the album cover is based on what we show you. The questions okay. are now doubled in worth. Uh, you're a DJ and a producer. You, I, you are no stranger to touching and looking at records, so we'll see how you do on this round. All right, let's go. All right, the first one. What album cover is this? It is what looks like a computer-generated depiction of the bottom of a Timberland boot and a brick background behind it. Is it Chance the Rapper, Acid Rap, Red Man, Docs the Name 2000, Ludacris, Chicken and Beer, or Method Man 421 the day after? Uh, I'm gonna go with uh, B, Red Man, Docs the Name 2000. Red Man, Docs the Name 2000. That is correct. <laughs> Favorite Red Man album. Yes. Oh, favorite Red Man album? Muddy Waters. Muddy Hands Waters. Because uh, Rock the Spot. Rock the Spot is my joint. Unbelievable. Yeah. I mean, there's, for him, I guess he's one of those artists where, like, 
if anybody says like the first three, like you, you can't really be mad at them. Like it's it's like a five <laughs> situation, like low end versus midnight. It's like you have your own flavor, but uh, yeah, yeah, Red Man. I mean, like some of his later work is amazing too. The, the last joint he just put out, I think called Zug, is like I was saying the other day, it's quintessential. It's peak Red Man. It's like all up in his wheelhouse. You know what I'm saying? Like the the slap somebody joint is is circular, circulating, but uh, oh yeah, the Zug Zug is my joint right now. I had no idea. I, I got to peep it. I haven't checked it out. If you know, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, somebody says, it's funny how the shoelace looks like a bee. Oh, yeah. Oh, I, I guess I could see that. Yeah, it's a little subliminal that we threw in there. <laughs> Shout out to Intricate860. All right, we're moving on to the next question uh, in this round. What album cover is this? It's a pretty wide shot of what looks like a sea of people like a crowd audience with a landscape of a city in the background with a yellow sort of haze over it is it huh? far eye focus daily dilated peoples neighborhood watch the far side lab cabin california or is it jurassic five power in numbers um i almost went with b but no uh it's actually d jurassic five power in numbers he says it's d very confidently so if I'm wrong, right. wow. <laughs> yeah, I know that record. Uh, I'm, I'm New Charlie Tune, the New Mark. Th those are guys also that you you have a relationship with. I know New Mark has uh, has produced, uh, I think, uh, at least one of your albums, right? There's a few, a few of them. He got um the Zone on Then What Happened, um, Walk Like on Around the Sun, and I yep. feel like I'm forgetting a few joints with him for him too. So. Yeah, he's great. Friend of the show. I think we're going to have him on soon as well. He's a... Uh, that would be... Yeah. To get everything right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uncle uh, New. Yeah, shout out to Uncle New. All right, we're moving into the final question in this round. Been doing very well so far. All right. It's like a model house, it looks like, being held by somebody wearing a red and white, maybe tracksuit, and they're wearing like a dookie rope chain around their neck. What album cover is this? Is it Kid and Play, Fun House, DJ Jazzy Jeff and the Fresh Prince, Rock the House, House of Pain, self-titled House of Pain, or is it Moni Love, Down to Earth? Hmm. We might have to play the Jeopardy music for a second for this one. Let me see. Uh, if it wasn't multiple choice, I would have guessed a Rob Bass record. Just because mm -hmm. of that. that red Uh, no, it's not House of Pain. Uh, down to, was Down to Earth Money Love's first album? I can't reveal anything more than the card says, Jay. I'm sorry, my hands are tied. Go with... Um, uh, I got people saying B in the comments. I see a couple of Bs. Yeah, I'm going to go with B. I'm going to go with B. Jazzy Jeff and the Fresh Prince Rock the House. I'm not too sure about this one, though. He's not too sure. He's leaning on the crowd. Some people are saying D, some people are saying B, but he's going with B. And it's a good thing he did, because it is. Yeah. There you go. There obscure you go. 80s rapper, uh, Fresh Prince. Housey, you know what I mean? And uh, yeah, yeah, no, I didn't think so. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> You, you leaned into your, your instinct. That was good. Uh, Jeff is another guy that you've worked with uh, in your career uh, a couple times as well. This with Jeff, um, Charm Life, Break It Down on uh, The Magnificent. Um, he's done a few joints for me on uh, Then What Happened and obviously on, uh, on All of the Above. So, yeah, definitely love working with Jeff. That's like the OG right there. I mean, yeah, and just such a, such a nice guy. Uh, everybody has, you know, good things to, to say about him. Uh, Charm Life is, is, I mean, you mentioned it, so now I have to go down that rabbit hole for a second. Like, what... Hey, had you ever heard somebody sort of rhyme on a beat like that that was just so, such like a, it was, it was a jazz. It was like a jazz like track. No. The, they, they was playing me the beat. He actually played me the beat like, this is, this is going to be the instrumental joint on the album. And I was like, mm, no, it's not. <laughs> or for his album. Yes, yes, for his album. And, oh, okay. Um, and what I wrote was so personal. He, he, he let me use it for my album as well. But, um, but yeah, I was like, you know, just leave me in a room for a little while. And uh, he literally left me in a room and just had it on loop and came back and I'd written The Charm Life. 
But had you, uh, I guess what I'm wondering is, had you ever like premeditated doing something like that? Because, you know, when you think about like a lot of like rappers that, you know, they write to beats and, you know, the beats are usually more of a standard where you would consider like a hip hop beat. It doesn't really have that swing. So like, what was it like? You, you just kind of like got to it and writing to that yeah. rhythm. I didn't even really have a concept until I heard that song. I was like, this sounds like the story of my life. <laughs> and I just wrote it like that. And I was Damn. writing. You heard it here first. We're moving on to our third round. Our third round is Digging in the Crate. So these are now worth 15 points. I'm going to ask you questions about a sample. I'll play you the sample, and then you have to answer the question about it. You ready to go with this one? Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. We got Jay Live with the questions right now. All right. This Prince Paul produced De La Soul song samples 10 artists in one song including Bob Marley, Slave, Bob James, and Aerosmith. I'm going to play you some of those samples so that you might be able to uh, identify. That's a, lot to, that's a lot to digest right there. Hold on a second. All right. So it's, it's all, they lost. Samples 10 artists. This sounds like one of those really hard uh, uh, um, spoken uh, like math questions. <laughs> There's two trains. Bob, Aerosmith. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm going to play you some of the samples, okay? Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Fair enough. So that's just a little bit of Slave. Then we have... Uh, they did sample a lot of records on that one. God damn, they had a budget. <laughs> this is Aerosmith, Walk This Way, Drum Break. Yep. yep. I already know the answer, but y'all play the sample. All right. We got... Uh, Bob James. Yep, yep. And there's yep. even a little bit of a uh, little Bob Marley. Uh, yep, keeping the faith. D. Keeping the faith, he says. I got the 12 inch. The remix is amazing. That is correct. <laughs> Keep the faith. Love that song, too. Still, I, I mean, <laughs> and yeah, like when, when I saw that and we were writing that, I was like, wait, there were really 10 samples in this song? But Man, you could do that then. <laughs> Those were the days. And probably cleared them all. Yeah, they cleared them all because you can, you can talk about them now. No problem, man. man. Yeah. Um, you also worked with Prince Paul on the Handsome Boy Modeling School album. Uh, that is one of Steve Wonder's favorite songs. He, he, he insisted that I bring this up. You know what's wild? Huh question wrong and i was like trying to wrap my head around prince poe doing a de la soul beat and i was like wow prince poe did a de la soul beat but yeah prince poe of course <laughs> <laughs> the other og yeah. that's what like flex when you first when i first saw the question i was like wait a minute there's a lot going on here but no of course prince poe did that beat of course yeah OG. he was an instrumental yeah. prince poe did wax paper which is which might be my um I don't know. It's like one of the most studied records I've ever done. Um, In what way? What do you mean? Well, the lyrics to Wax Paper, the first 16 bars incorporate different aspects of uh, Technique 1200, and the rest of it kind of carry on the rest of the story. And the story is about these twin brothers who grew up to be assassins uh, for hire, and until one of them had a change of heart. And the whole song, so there's like four different layers to the song. Because it's really one big metaphor about me going from DJing and primarily focusing on rhyming. Right. Um, yeah. <laughs> we'd, also, we'd also be remiss. Yeah, so I, I see that for sure. We'd also be remiss uh, to not mention that today, and I promise that we did not plan this, today okay. is the anniversary of your debut album, The Best Part. Yes. Yes, congratulations to me. <laughs> the Best Part is 19 years old. Your oldest Best part. child. Oh. <laughs> um, My oldest child will be 20 in May. <laughs> wow. All right. So right there. Now, that's that's the official release. The, the album sort of ruminated for a while. Well, there is a source that has the best part coming out April 97. Wow. Um, that's back when I was still on Payday before things went haywire between Payday and London. Right. And they the waves with Polygram. And it became, you know, the greatest record never heard, so to speak. That's what people were saying. And it was bootlegged all ad nauseum because it was released to press in 99, or 98. Sorry, it was released to press in 98. 
got, you know, quote unquote, four mics in the source because they didn't want to give it the fifth politics and whatnot. And then, um, all of these writers had it. So when it didn't come out, all of these bootlegs started circulating. Mm. On 99, I put out my own bootleg with no credits, just, you know, uh, picture on the front, baby picture on the back. And then, you know, looked around, saw the coast was clear, and then finally released it officially, the official version in uh, 2001. Yeah. As the story goes. Do you, are you the type of person that listens to your older stuff with any kind of frequency? Or is it kind of like, you know, for a lot of artists, they don't want to go back to it. Or you, you did it, but do you, I'm curious. Not my ancient stuff, like, um, cause it's this wild, you know, we're talking 2001 for that to officially come out. So like, you know, I've been, I've been putting out stuff sort of consistently since. So when people say older stuff, I would think of like, like the older stuff I listen to might be like Around the Sun. I might go as far back as like Then What Happened, but right. you know, I got older stuff a few years ago. And it's sort of like rhyme books. I always liken it to rhyme books. Like when I was coming up, you know, I have... You know, this, this shoebox full of composition books because I had big feet so they could fit in a, a shoebox. <laughs> but, uh, That's a big feet. Um, and, uh, you know, the rhymes in the new one, I would kick, and I wouldn't want to kick the rhymes in the old one in the next year when those rhymes, you know, when they were rhymes newer than that, I wouldn't want to go back and kick the older ones. So it's kind of the same way with albums, but sometimes when I'm when I'm in a rut, you know, I just listen to myself and be like, oh, yeah, that boy good. So let me let me go ahead and get back in that bag. So... Um, yeah, I do listen to my stuff, for sure. Is there any, uh, like, are there songs that, like, from that album that still really resonate with you in a way that, like, you're surprised it's, like, 19 years later, you're like, man, like, I wrote this 19 years ago. Like, wow. Like, yeah. I was on some shit. Them That's Not, I perform pretty much every show, so that's going to be there. Um, I never really dug back into that style. I didn't want to, like, I could rap fast all day, but I, it's not necessarily my, my you know, my... I wouldn't say my forte, because I could do it pretty much, however. It wasn't my preference to rap fast. Sure. And then everybody was rapping fast, so I was like, all right, let me just show you I can rap fast, and then go back to doing what I was doing. <laughs> yeah. But, um, so there's, uh, off the best part, I always do Don't Play, mm. um, just because I love Brazilian jazz. Um, let me see, what else do I do off the best part? I would do, uh... Uh, oh, the best part, obviously, the the title track. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, like the songs that I perform are probably the the older songs that I listen to the most. Makes sense. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. Was there any precedent that you had heard or were thinking of as a reference for a song like "Then That's Not," where you like sort of change the speed and it, it almost it it becomes like double time and then goes like pretty seamlessly to, to single time, even though the beat changes, like. <laughs> Well, well, funny thing about, I put up a little video on on, on the gram today. You can check the the, the account later. Um, uh, there's a song on the best part called Epilogue, and a lot of the verses were the original "Them That's Not." Mm. Originally, I structured "Them That's Not" to be like the hook was the hook, but the verses were somebody that doesn't write their own rhymes, somebody that bites, and then somebody that just wants to cross over. So that was them that's not. I had the three rhymes was like just put down like that. And then, you know, messing with working with Grab Lover and I heard that beat and the beat was like that. When I heard it, he'd done it like that to slow down and speed up. Um and I heard it and then one morning I was like, yo, it's like the rise and fall of a whack MC and the hook works. I was like, what if I took them that's not and turned it into a story? And, you know, kind of just play with it like that. And then just, it just kind of happened that way, you know? Get more of a narrative but, that was mirrored by the, the, the change. Yeah, yeah. Because, you know, you got, you got, you know, Castro in them last night. He didn't write his own rhymes. He wasn't afraid to bite. And he was trying to cross over as, as quickly as possible. So that was, that was kind of like the moral of the story come to life. You know what I mean? But then it wasn't, you know, epilogue wasn't on the original best part. But after the whole, after the whole process... And learning so much about the music industry and, you know, seeing so many people come and go. Right. It was, let me take these verses and adapt them to kind of put a bow on, on the album. 
And that's how it became Epilogue. Incredible. Man, we really appreciate these stories. Again, the 19th anniversary of the best part. Sir. We are all <laughs> old. Yes, I got the grades to prove it. <laughs> all right, we're going to move on to the second question in our sample round. And okay, the question yeah. is, in 1989, this artist was the first of over 500 to use the Skull Snaps' It's a New Day drum break. I'll play that iconic drum break now. <laughs> Wow, this first? Who was the first in 1989? Was it Tim Dog, Queen Latifah, Steezo, or Heavy D? So was Skull Snaps the beat for Fuck Compton? Was that the Tim Dog joint? Again, I can yeah. provide you with more context here. You can think out loud, but I just don't want you to think I'm rude if I don't answer. No, 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 it's cool, it's cool, it's cool. Um... See, I'm just like, I'm tripping over when things came out now. Cause I'm, you know, when you get this old, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He put out his first album 19 years ago, folks. <laughs> and uh, 89. Shout out to Master Ace. We see you in the chat. Master Ace, what up? Yeah, 89, I'd have been 13. I wasn't really looking at the years on records. All right, tell you what, I'm going to say um, rest in peace, Steezo, who passed very recently. And I'm going to go with C, whether it's right or not, out of respect to Steezo. Uh, I think there's a chance it might be A, but I'm going with C, Steezo. Wow, all right. He says Steezo. My turn. <laughs> yes, that is correct. Uh, noble that you were going to sacrifice the points, even out of you know respect. But I had, to, I had to bring it all down to the max. Was not necessary. We, we 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 wrapped it up either way. All right, we're moving into our final question in our first or in our third round, rather. Okay. Cool in the gang. Summer Madness was sampled by all of these hip hop duos except for one of them. I'm gonna play you Summer Madness. <laughs> okay. Was it Gangstar? Pete Rock and CL Smooth. Method Man and Red Man, or DJ Jazz Jeff and the Fresh Prince. <laughs> we're, 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 we're tying up a bunch of the people we've mentioned earlier in, in the show here. So who has not sampled it? Oh, uh, man. I'm going to go with... Uh, I could be wrong. If I'm wrong, I'll consider it a trick question because I can almost hear the sample with all of these other MCs rhyming and all of these other producer styles. I'm going to go with uh, Method. Wait, 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 wait. Yeah, I'm going to go with C. I could be wrong. I'm going to go with C, Method Man and Red Man. All right. Well, we have a fun little prove out reveal that we're going to do. So let's take a let's walk through the crates. As, as, do but first of all, let's get the more obvious one out of the way. Uh, yeah, obviously. Summertime. It's starting to feel hot like summertime right now. Uh, so, say it again. I was trying to remember the gangsta one in my head. We'll get to that if if it exists. If yeah. Uh, uh, rock and seal smooth. I was like, they had to have used it. Yeah, it it it, it sounds like <laughs> a you know that it it's not obvious. It's 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 kind of obvious now that we're talking about it, but it's not obvious obvious because Pete is the goat. He flipped it for sure. He's the goat. So this is the moment of truth here. No pun intended. Right. Uh. <laughs> See what I did there? Thank you. I'll be here all night. Not really. We can only go an hour before Instagram cuts us off. Um, so the last person to use it was, of course, Gangstar. Hey. So the answer is Method Man and Red Man did not sample it. You got that correct. Let me hear the Gangstar joint. Play it again? All right. Concentration. Concentration. Deep concentration. We had you in deep concentration for this. Which reminds me, I'm way overdue. I was um somebody hit me, nominated me for the for the premiere challenge thing. So I got to put my cuts up. Oh yeah. Yeah. Got to do that. Uh, did you watch the premiere RZA battle? Oh yeah. Oh what, yeah. What, what are your thoughts? We're still talking about this. It doesn't feel like old news at this point. It was perfect. It was amazing. It was it was incredible. You know, yeah. I was, my thing was, you know, 
it's 20 songs. you got to pick 20 songs. They both obviously have, you know, tens upon tens upon tens of songs that they could have chosen from. Um, I was hoping Premier would have rocked the best part, but he got too many joints, you know what I'm saying? So, but like, people were sleeping on RZA, and I was like, look, I know if it was 200 songs, Premier would probably still just be chilling like, you know, the Energizer Bunny, but don't sleep on RZA, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> but it was amazing, man. The stories, the the history, you know, watching people enjoy it, tweeting it live, man, it was it was a great night. Felt very historic, and I don't know if you saw this, but they just announced this on the ninth. Erica Badu uh, versus Jill Scott. J yeah, yeah. What, what's your what's your stance on this? Are you are you taking a side? Um, hmm. yeah, I'm gonna have to go with Jilly from Philly just because always been a huge fan. And I lived in Philly from 03 to 05 and got to meet her a couple times to touch jazz. So mm. I'm going with, I'm going with Jill. But, it, you know, that's another toss-up, man. They're both amazing artists. You know what I'm saying? I mean, there are no losers, and they're both formidable, you know, if, if you even want to call them opponents. They're not, it's not really a... Yeah. It's all fun and games, man. It's, just a, it's, a, it's a fun, you know what I'm saying? It's just... My money would be on Ms. Badu. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. <laughs> There's no wrong answer. There's no wrong answer. Money. All right. <laughs> We have reached our final round, Jay Live, and our final round all, right. all times. Okay. So, uh, yes. what it is that we're going to do? I'm going to give you three categories. You get to pick which category you're going to be going in. You will have 90 seconds to answer five questions in the category. They get increasingly harder. They get increasingly worth more points. So, these are your three categories for the night. All right, what we got? What we got? Legal rap side hustles. Is hmm. our category. The second one is the history of cold chilling. Ooh. And the third is hip hop song covers. Hmm. Okay. You is Master still there? Say it again. <laughs> I'm looking through the comments if Master Ace is still there. We don't need to put a friend for the cold chilling rights, but nah, let me see. I, got, I can't cheat. Let me see. Um. Uh, I'm intrigued by hip hop song covers. Okay. So we're going to go into that one. Yeah. All right. So. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> Master Ace says, uh oh. That cold chill in history, uh, I'm just going to say now, we are going to have Master Ace on the show. We confirmed it uh, earlier today. So uh, make sure you guys stick around for that. Um, I don't think we would give Master Ace the this category because that feels a little unfair. It's just a little too right. uh, inside baseball. But you never know what you're going to get when you come on the questions. All yeah, right. <laughs> so you will have 90 seconds. You have picked the hip hop song covers category. If you don't know the answer to one, you can <laughs> you can pass and and then come back to it. Uh, okay. I have OC's times up time to 90 seconds. So when the time is up on an OC. Your time is up. Sir, are you ready to get this started? Let's do it. All right. In our first round of our Time's Up, Jay-Z and Beyonce teamed up to record an update of this rapper's song, Me and My Girlfriend, on the Blueprint 2 album. Me and My Girlfriend. Say it again. Tupac? Tupac? That is correct. That is correct. Okay. This like, group like, released their cover of Sugar Hill Gang's Rapper's Delight as a single and music video in 1997. Red and Red and Meth? It wasn't uh, Red and Meth, although you're, oh, you're somewhat right. It's another... Say it again? Oh, um, was it Hit Squad? It wasn't Hit Squad. Wait, wait, I so saw EPMD? It wasn't EPMD. Uh, repeat the question. Hold on, hold on. It was a group that released a cover of Sugar Hill Gang's Rapper's Delight as a single and music video in 97. Am I missing up his, Hit Squad and Def Squad? Def Squad is correct. We will okay, thank you. God. There you go. All right. Hello. Snoop Dogg did a cover of this old school artist song as a single on his 96 album, The Dog Father. Lottie Dottie. It was not Lottie Dottie. Oh, wait, you know what? Children's story. No, wait, 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 wait. Uh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Give me a second. All right. Our time is running out soon. Mona Lisa? It was not Mona Lisa. We're looking for the artist as well, and you haven't said the artist yet. Oh, damn. Oh, so Slick Rick? Not Slick Rick. 
It's not Slick Rick. Okay, what am I thinking? Hold on. You said Snoop Dogg. Our time is up, J. Live. Oh. Uh, so wait. Repeat the question real quick. This just uh, Snoop Dogg this... recorded a cover of this old school artist song as a single on his '96 album, The Dog Father. The oh, The Dog Father. Okay, that's what tripped me up because he did um he did Lottie Dottie on the first first one. Right, 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 right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he he did the Vapors then. Okay, he did yeah, Vapors the... by Biz Marquee. So got gotcha. you. Question. Good question. Y'all got me on that one. Got gotcha. you. <laughs> I think uh, it, what, what tripped you up there a bit was the, the Def Squad, Hit Squad. You were, you were dancing around it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It happens. Uh, I'm going to total up your score now. Um, as I do that, I want to ask you one final question. Who would you okay. challenge to come on to our show? Who's somebody that you think we should reach out to? Hmm. All right, well, you. I'm hoping Master Ace, you don't need me to challenge him because he's right there. <laughs> just jump. So let me, let's let's you know let's spread spread love a little bit. Uh, who would be dope on here? Give me a second. Let me think. All oh, good. Take your time. Uh, I'd like to see Prince Paul on here personally. That would be dope. Prince Paul would be amazing. He just uh, we just I went to an event that he did uh, at the Beat Junkies uh, Academy out here, and he was dropping. Oh, <laughs> so how hard would the questions have to be <laughs> it would have to be pretty deep i mean from the guy who sampled 10 records on on a on a day lost single you know yeah um so we have totaled your points uh j live the the last yeah. one hurt you a little bit but you still okay. scored a, res a respectable 120 points and you are a champion okay. in our eyes okay thank you very much <laughs> yeah um uh, if you have some time, do you have time right now? We have a little bit of time. Yeah. Somebody asked, uh, who would be a good match to produce a whole joint with you, like a whole album? Hmm. Ah, let's see. Um, how about... You know it would be dope? Uh, Knots. I've never worked with Knots. Big, big fan of Knots. That would be amazing. Knots would be crazy. Knots, you follow him on Instagram. To work with, you know what I'm saying? Like, like to to make it to make it a little bit uh, more interesting. Yeah. Obviously, if I did a whole a, or like a whole album with Odyssey or something like that, you know, a whole album with Newmark, all those would be crazy. But if I had to pick somebody I never work with, never ever work with, um, Knots, uh, Pharrell, uh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Dre. Let's swing for the fences. <laughs> Jeff <laughs> Brown. That's amazing. <laughs> the, don't, we, there's no need to be uh, conservative here. Uh, all right. Um, Cap Callis, shout out to Cap Callis, asks, who do you think has the best breath control? Hmm. Besides me, <laughs> I have to go with um, Ace. Shout out to Ace. Uh, homeboy Sandman. Another. Uh, let me think. People I've seen on stage, obviously KRS One. He invented the term, damn near. Yeah. Like watching him. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, Black Thought. Oh, come and, on. And Big Daddy Kane. Big Daddy Kane. I say out of all, out of everybody I've named, I have to say Big Daddy Kane because he'll do the whole scoop and scrap dance routine while he's rapping and not miss a beat. In fact, as as I'm, as I'm having time to process the question, I say Big Daddy Kane. And I would also say Chuck D. Because mm. Chuck D, Chuck D could do jumping jacks through his whole set and not miss a beat. Like, it's amazing. That brother is amazing. <laughs> like, like he's, he's maintaining he's, uh, good breath control just like an exercise in cardio. Like, how, like how, how do you maintain your breath control? For me, it's, it's more, yeah, it's, it's, it is exercise in cardio, but I think it happens to be knowing how to breathe from your belly instead of your chest, you know, your, your diaphragm. And uh, and knowing, you know how to write. I think I think writing has a lot to do with breath control. Like like when I teach, I'm seeing in workshops. The whole idea is like you have to write with the tempo in mind, and you have to write with the syllables in mind in in your bars, so that you don't give yourself too much to do. You know what I'm saying? And you want to make sure that when you're recording, you know exactly where your breaths are going to be. So you don't have to be punching all day. And then obviously, whatever you're recording, you have to be cognizant 
of how you're going to perform it. So that's very important. So like, I think Ed OG, going on tour with Ed OG taught me to write with the stage in mind. Mm. But watching him on tour and like every line was like, it was like it was made for the stage. And you're hearing these songs and you're singing these songs. But then when you're at a show, you realize he wrote this with the stage in mind. Like he's, he's like every line is so clear and he gives it to you in such a pace that you don't miss a word in, in the midst of all that chaos. So that's, that's one thing. So Very intentional writing. Yeah, that makes sense. Olivia asks, Olivia, by the way, uh, DM'd us and told us that she wrote a college paper about uh, your song, A Charmed Life. Uh, oh, wow. Dissected all the lines. But this is a question about a different song from that same album. Uh, is uh, is the song like this, Anna? Is it about a real girl or just the cadence of Anna and how it sounded like Anna? Uh? Nah, that was that was basically it. It was um, you know, some Bismarck. It's like this, and Dantana. You go on and on and on and on. You know, what I'm saying don't go to get you go to X song. Yeah. So, and then special Ed, how to think about it. He had like uh, it's like this, y'all. It's like that, y'all. I got nice hair still wearing hat, y'all. And um, I was like, yo, imagine you do a song like this, Anna, but it's instead of, uh, you know, like this, Anna, like, you know, some Dre and Snoop, it's, you know, you talking to a girl named Anna and you telling her what it's like. <laughs> you know, it was just kind of one of those what if concepts. And I just I just ended up fleshing it out into the song. Wordplay, folks. Wordplay. Um, all right. Uh, what made you write The Day I Fell Off? Oh, man, just anxiety. <laughs> <laughs> Um, <laughs> it was, um, nah, it's, I say half anxiety and half, um, bravado and ego, like, uh, in retrospect, you know what I'm saying? I would, I would not, I would advise against writing things like that because, you know, you know, words are powerful thoughts of things. And, um, you but yeah, that <laughs> the concept was, uh, was basically like, what would it be like? You know, and at the time, you know, for me, that's, that's the thing to do. I would just, you know, have an idea and then really be able to flesh it out into a whole song, you know, like um, uh, the Lose No Time joint. I was listening to uh, Supreme Clientele and ended up taking the sample and cutting it and then writing a story about meeting a girl at a Wu-Tang concert, you know what I'm saying? Mm. So, like, you know, to this day, that, that song is maybe a year or two old. But um, I still, I still always love to just come up with an idea and then just turn it into a whole song. You know, you're a master at that. You, you've done so many things. I, I describe you often for people who are not as familiar with the catalog, and I say this every time. Uh, J Live has written things and done things in rap that no one has ever done before or <laughs> since. You like. You are a master at at at, at writing. I, I thank you. Much respect. Thank you. Um, Fun fact. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, absolutely. That's all you need. Um, master Ace uh, asks, "Are you still teaching?" Um, not in the board of ed. I haven't taught in the board of ed since '02. Uh, I taught from '98 to '02. Uh, went to SUNY Albany. I graduated with an English English degree, and. Um, that was basically what happened was, yeah, well, who got the same friend? I don't know. I'm getting, we get distracted. Uh, well, yeah. No, nah, we don't. Ace, hey, come on. <laughs> we have similar friends. We're wearing glasses. Yeah, yeah we get it. We well, all look alike. We all, all us glasses <laughs> wearers. Jeez, come on. Get over it. Yeah. Um, what happened was the best part was supposed to come out on uh, payday in 98, and I graduated in 98. I had actually set things up for my senior year, spring semester. I went to, um, I did a bunch of summer courses junior year after junior year so that by spring semester, all I had to do was an independent study, which was the complete works of J-Live and a research paper on hip hop so that I could tour and then walk. And then the label split from the distributor and there was no album coming out, so there was no tour. Mm. So I graduated and I was like, all right, well, I'd set my whole, you know, I was the English major, business minor, you know, write the rhymes, count the money. And I'd set things up to actually take off with the music so when that didn't happen you know some of the gods were like yo we're gonna be teaching in uh brownsville and you know one of the gods has a spot for you if you want and i was like of course so right. i taught i taught uh eighth grade language arts 
in Brownsville at the same school that uh, Mike Tyson went to, 263, uh, around the corner from, if you've ever seen that video where MOP run up on the bootleggers, um, <laughs> that's where we used to go to that fish spot right, right there across the street every day for lunch. <laughs> Um, and then I ended up teaching in uh, Bushwick at the school that the beat miners went to. Wow. And one of their teachers was, was the teacher next door to me, Mr. George. <laughs> so they was like, yo, Mr. George? Hip hop is smart. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah it's an, he's no by Marcus. He's from Brownsville. Yeah. It was actually, it was called Hunter. They named it after Esther, Esther Clark Hunter after, after it was Marcus. Uh, any other rappers you see cut at the same time? Have you ever seen any other rapper uh, do a routine similar to what you do on Bragging Rights, where you cut and rhyme at the same time? He then does it with one hand, which is crazy. Like, he holds the mic with one hand and then just kind of goes back and forth with the other, which is yeah. nuts. Um, historically, I heard Grandmaster Kaz does it. I think Lord Finesse does it. Um yeah. But uh, I know Skills, Skills is doing it. Right. Um, man. But uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, I don't have it. I don't, I have, it's not like a patent pending. It's just my thing, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> you know, I always liken it to playing the keyboards and singing at the same time or you know, playing the guitar. Yeah. As the Inca one says, Lost Pro does it, which I, I would not doubt that for a second. I can totally see that. Sounds like, um, yeah, sounds like so. He didn't do it when I, I saw Finesse in uh, Croatia, and I don't think he did it then. Oh, you know what? Um, Psycho Less? Maybe Psycho Less. I saw Psycho Less DJing, and then he was, like, throwing his instrumentals, and he was spitting. I don't know if he was going back and forth. Hmm. But, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, somebody yeah. said 65 as well. Yeah, maybe. Um, all right. Uh, I Pour Drinks asks, your favorite lyricist? Uh, that's a tough one, but I don't know. Maybe Lyric some of your favorite lyricists. Lyricists. Um, rest in peace to the, the late, great Bill Withers. Um, some of my favorite songs. Stevie yeah. Wonder. Talking about lyrics. lyrics Stevie Wonder. Uh, Fiona Apple. You heard that uh, new Apple? I haven't heard the new album yet, but I know she got bars. <laughs> so I'm looking forward to it. Like, sitting in digest uh let me think lyricist oh man if you give me some time i'll probably come up with some other names those within are... hip-hop uh, what well i mean no th those are good those are good picks uh, yeah i would is there anybody in hip-hop currently that maybe uh is is sort of inspiring to you because we all know about the greats that, that have existed but is there anybody more recent or or maybe perhaps under acknowledged uh, I don't know about under acknowledged. I'll go with if, if I had to give you five, I'd give you Boy Sam, Odyssey, uh, Quelle Chris. Uh, who do I listen to a lot? Um, Royce. Right. Um, in terms of Lil, yeah, yeah. Royce, huge Royce fan, man. Like, the way Royce paints pictures, I definitely put him up there. And that's how it went down. Another classic episode of the Questions Hip Hop Trivia. Classic material. Big thanks, big shout out to Jay Live for joining us. Make sure that you check out everything that's going on with him. I'll put a link to all of his socials in the show notes. Want to also give another shout out to our Patreon, everybody who is subscribed to that. If you haven't yet done so, join the Patreon squad. $5 a month just for this episode alone. You can get bonus content such as a playlist of all the songs and music mentioned in this episode as well as my embarrassing moment that I cut out of this. We really appreciate your support. If you enjoy the questions, it's a great way to show your support. You can also rate, subscribe, and leave a review of the podcast. That also is a great way to help the show. The Questions Hip Hop Trivia is a proud member of the Stony Island Audio Network. The show is written, produced, edited, and hosted by me, Sean Kantrowitz. This episode, additional writing, is by DJ Steve Wonder. The show's theme is by Midas the Beast and Czarism. Until next time, peace. Peace.